All right, what's up, everybody? Look, we don't know what to call this show yet, but it's going to be Letterman Show. But I'm one of your hosts, Darren Richard, joined by... Amari Rogers. What's going on, y'all? Look, if you don't know me or don't know us, I played from 16 to 21, played running back, and now I'm out in the world. Amari played... Receiver, man. I played receiver from 2017 to 2020. Got a natty and a couple of ACC championships, man. I'm, I'm glad to be giving back to the fans, man. Showing love, y'all. Yeah, man, we're glad to be here. Like I said, also accolades we put them as well two natties all the acc championships some of the best years it comes to football but look we're gonna do this every week really just reacting recapping the game i think to me i see so many casuals having opinions right or wrong but i feel like it also needs to be some time sometimes like somebody credible enough to be like all right here's what we see yeah i'm like a, people that have been there done it um and able to just give you all some insight to, to like the program to to me, our viewpoints on the team, the highs and lows, because even just going back to the Georgia game, I wasn't as in shambles as a lot of people were. Because <laughs> if you watch the tape, bro, if you watch the tape, there were signs. Like people think Sweeney just be trying to be super positive. Mm -hmm. If you really know ball, but there were signs from that game to me that showed like we got a chance to win. Like, it was competitive. Mm -hmm. but we just can't. You can't make mistakes and stay in the game against. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it was real competitive, especially early. Uh, I just feel like you just. Going through the game, you know, Georgia just caught their rhythm. And, you know, when you're defending national championship, when you catch your rhythm, it's kind of hard to stop, you know, especially if you're not responding and, and scoring points. So I just can't feel, kind of feel like that's kind of how that game went. You know, defense was doing well, very well at the beginning of the game. And I just kind of think, you know, they just got tired as the game went on. You know, it's know. tough to hold a, a top opponent out of the end zone like that, you know, when you're not scoring points. So I just kind of feel like that was just how that went. Yeah, me too, bro. I was like, obviously, 34-3 looked bad. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But to me, if you watch the game, it didn't feel as bad as it was until late. Now, when late, you know, we threw, we threw that, we waved that white flag and they got ugly. Yeah. Uh, but we got out of there. And like, I think to me, since that game, the guys are obviously App State, you, they responded. Like, if you could textbook, like, how can you respond after losing to national television, big game? Like, to me, the way they responded to App State was literally perfect. Mm -hmm. And then come out of App State, okay, okay, you beat a lesser opponent, non conference game more like a tune-up game, coming to this game, what you really want to see is exactly what they did today. You know, obviously there's, there's a couple of things like you would like maybe change, but bro, I mean, 59-35, it really, that score also to me, don't really indicate how bad of a whooping it really was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. No, I feel like no. it was, it could have, it really could have been a lot uglier. No, nah, you, know you know how Sweeney is. He kind of, you know, pulled a foot off the gas once, you know, it gets combat. But I wish Sweeney would run the score up a little every now and then. But I know. That's I what I'm saying. <laughs> he, uh, no, he's a good coach. You're always going to play anybody who's deserving once we get up. Yeah. But, like, it really, to me, it was, like, 59-14. Mm -hmm. And then, like, obviously, we kind of offensively, we saw, saw that a little bit. They started scoring some points. But my overall thoughts, bro, was just, like, you see the boys saying just belt to belt to ass. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. That's my that's my honest like <laughs> man it was I'm literally good. just I mean from the jump, bro. And I love it. That's like, what I'm saying. The, the thing that I've taken from the Georgia game that was so good, that's a positive, is that Georgia is probably the best team they're gonna see until you know the end of the season. So it's like they got the best yeah. of the best off rip. So like now for the rest of the season, they're probably not gonna see nobody like Georgia. So it's like, okay, we know what the best of the best looks like. So the rest of the teams they're they're nowhere near as talented or as physical or as anything like Georgia. So we already have an advantage as far as, you know, already seeing what the best of the best is. So we're just gonna go out there and do what we do. And it's just gonna be easier because the competition isn't just not up to par. For sure. And like, I, I think people, like, I think Clemson fans know this, but like, to me, like this game, like got some nice juice to it. Like, obviously, South Carolina is traditional rival. Florida State is probably one of the more funner, more fun teams to play mm -hmm. just because of like the tradition of that rivalry. Right. Alabama was a cool, was a cool foe. But the NC State game really got some juice to it just yeah. over like the course of like Sweeney's career with mm -hmm. him and Dave Doran. Because there's been like the towel pulling, <laughs> them thinking we uh we were using a computer on the sidelines. Yeah, all of that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, then like they end up getting a couple wins out of there. We end up losing a couple times. Yeah. And so like to me, like I, I respect that Dorrance built a competitive ACC program. Well, no. hey, even like 
they went on a nice run a couple of years ago, even nationally. Like they, they put, he put together a really good program sure. to where it's good to have somebody in, within the conference to challenge us. Mm-hmm. And he, he funny, man. He, he like, he'd be slick at the mouth, got some good remarks yeah. to where he makes a game fun, bro. Honestly, I mean, you got, if you're going to dish, you got to be able to take it. Like the red solo cup was legendary. Yeah. Like all these <laughs> things over the years have made this game like what it is. And you can feel it with it. Like even watching game of day, like, I'm sure both coaches are like letting their players know, hey, this is a game you better handle business. You know, obviously right. we did today. You right. can feel the heat within the game. So to me, it was really dope for all the fans, for the players, for everybody, especially after losing last year. Right. Yeah. To come in, to come to be in a valley, get a nice W and this way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this way. It's always good to get a W this way, man. Just to dominate in all three phases. It's always great, man, just to continue to build confidence. So, and especially with the team that we're playing next week in Stanford, you know, they just had a, a big away victory, you know, coming into Syracuse right. on Friday night. And I feel like their confidence is super high right now, uh, which I, 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 I was like Stanford, you know, traveling across the country like that back to back. But, you know, they proved uh, last night that, you know, that doesn't affect them. So, you know, we, we just got to come ready to play. And, you know, Stanford, we'll get to them at the end, but like, Bro, you know, they would love nothing more to come to the ACC and knock off, like, the traditional top dog. That's, I know that's what they coach saying, bro. No doubt. Like, coming to ACC, y'all got a chance to come to Clemson, night game, and potentially win. Like, you, you just know that's how the coach is, like, building up the psyche. Like, and I ain't knocking. If they come do that, have some to them. Obviously, okay. we, we, st- we stomp a mud hole through them, too. Man. But let's get into, like, to me, when I watch the game, like I said, I think the word that came to my mind was like complete dominance. Mm-hmm. Like, and we haven't played honestly like that. We had a couple of games over the years, but to me, since we were there, no doubt. So we really saw like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we didn't just win, like we dominate. That's like people throwing shade, like, okay, y'all beat y'all are supposed to beat them. But right. it's like one thing to beat a team, it's one thing to dominate a team. Exactly. Be like, bro, we look really, really, yeah. really And they good. said, they said a stat uh, during the game that I didn't know it was like the first time Clemson scored like 60 points in back-to-back games, like ever or something wow. like that. So I was like, wow. dang, like that just shows like how good the offense just exploded just like that in two games, man. And it's like, you see teams like Notre Dame who's getting upset and then they had a, a close game right. today as well. They're supposed to dominate those games, but you know, we come in and we dominate the game. So it's kind of like, it's, Hats off to Sweeney, man, because Sweeney always did a great, great job of making sure we were locked in versus, you know, lesser opponents and stuff like that. Thanks. And, you know, that just shows the, you know, the, the program that he's built and, you know, the mindset that he's building into those guys, so, you know, come ready to play every single Saturday. No, for sure. But my, my, my obviously, like, thoughts, like, let's, let's go through a couple of players because I obviously hot topic to the fans is like, <coughs> to me, Kate, <coughs> Kate Klubnik, bro. Um, this is a perfect time for everybody to appreciate the growth of K Club. No, like, no doubt, bro. Apologize, <laughs> take your U turns. I ain't gonna say it was undeserved. Like he definitely, uh, yeah. he he like, and, the, and even to his own standard, you know, he was probably more frustrated, and like flustered than anybody that he uh, wasn't playing to the level. Like, bro, was a champion all the way through high school. Was exactly. a top was a top player's position. Mm-hmm. Came to Clemson with the vision of being the next in line. Like he wasn't thinking about dropping off from. Sean and Trevor and Taj, exactly. Kelly, one year, like, he think he's going to come in and rise up. Mm-hmm. And obviously, he's had some moments of showing some glimpses of greatness, but at the same time, he's had some lapses of, like, not being the elite player. Right. But, bro, his level, what needs to be studied is the time span from him struggling to being an elite player. Not a good player, bro. Yeah. That's the crazy part. It's like, yeah. bro went from being, like, struggling <laughs> to elite. Yeah. Like, and like Bro, honestly, way, honestly, man, honestly, like, honestly, in the in the span of a couple weeks, because it's like, like I said, from week one, we didn't score many points, and you know, right. it, it it's not all on the quarterback, but you know, ultimately, people's gonna put it on the quarterback, and that's even right. from the first game to the second game to now, you've seen so much improvement, and that's why the offense is moving the way it is. And I even said before the season, I said this season is gonna be on high two plays. You know, if yeah. he, he carries the offense, and if he does, we're going to be balling. And he has in a couple last couple of games, and you can see how the games have went. You know, if he continues to be yeah. consistent and playing like this, the sky's the, the, the limit. Bro, I agree. I said the same thing. Like, ultimately, like, this season was going to rise and fall on two. Like, that was it. I mean, I, that was even coming from, like, honestly, within the building, outside the building, like, everybody kind of knew, like, they got enough players on the receiver, Running back, we'll give us a couple of players mm-hmm. as we like 
a second. But like defensively, it was really like, bro, is two gonna be who we all think he could be? You know, right. and right now, I think he is that and then some. Like he is playing, I mean, as good a ball at quarterback these last two games. Like okay. there's wow. been like, you know like, that's crazy to say. It went from being like, bro, can he do it? To now is like, like what he's doing is like elite. It's not just like good. It's like he's not just doing a bare minimum enough to just get us a win. Like mm-hmm. the way he's playing is a reason, a sole reason why we are dominating and playing the way we're playing. And I'm just gonna say this, like, like I said, apologize, send your remarks, bust some U-turns. But bro, he's playing like this. I mean, he's playing himself. I mean, into every conversation. That's a crazy take, mm-hmm. but the way he numbered, like, if you take away Georgia game, these last two games, I mean, yeah. you could put anything like quarterback of the like the, whatever the quarterback year of the year award is, ACC okay. player of the year year awards. Okay. I mean, even crazy enough to say we keep winning, make us Heisman conversation. Yeah. I don't think I, I don't know if he leaves this year. This is a deep class, but I mean, you're talking about being the top of the quarterback list coming to next year, the high. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, like everything is on the table for him right now. No, and obviously, long season. I don't want to get too antsy, but at the same time, I'm not going to not get a man his flowers for what he's been doing. No, no him. doubt, you got it. You got to give him his flowers, man. And, and even though the schedule looks pretty favoring from now on, too, we really only got right. like Louisville and probably Florida State, maybe just because of how hype the uh, rivalry and but rivalry is. But schedule is pretty favoring, man. I, I I feel like we can continue to put the foot on the gas, man, to keep rolling, man. So we're back, man. Are we back? Are we, are we back? I hey. feel like we're back. Hey, we might, we might be back. I feel like hey, we're we back, might bro. Be back. We might be back, man. We might. Hey, we we definitely top three in the ACC right now. So I'm I'm excited about where we are for sure. I feel like we're back, y'all. Look, all my fans there. I feel like we. To me, this is what it feels like. This is like because you know it when you see it. Like I swear, you know it when you don't. To me, it just feels like the Clemson football that we all know and love and have appreciated. Through this run of being this be underneath Sweeney, like it just feels like this is the ball that we all are fans of and appreciate. And the reason we came to Clemson, our experience in Clemson, like this feels like it. And I'm like, what's yeah. continuing? And honestly, bro, this is the reason all these guys came to Clemson. They didn't come to Clemson to be four and four last year. Exactly. Like eight and four, whatever. Even even eight and four, they didn't come to Clemson. They came to Clemson to do this. Exactly. And it's like so, I feel like this team has a chip on their shoulder too. So. You know, sure. a Clemson team with a chip on our shoulder is a dangerous Clemson team. So, like, that's what yeah. got me excited, too. Like, I feel like they got something to prove, and they're going to go out there every single week and try to prove that. You know, everybody's saying, you know, they're young, young team, you know, transfer portal. We think we need to dig in the portal and stuff like that. And I ain't going to lie. You know, I'll be lying if I said I, Yeah, I'll no, be, I'll be thinking, I'll be thinking a little bit, but too. It's like, but it's like, you know, they're, they got that chip on our shoulder that, you know, we can play with the guys we got here. And, you know, I love seeing yeah. that, man. And that just shows, the, you know, the competitiveness and the, the heart and the drive them them kids got right now. So I'm, I'm excited, man. Me too, bro. All right, last couple players we get into. Honestly, you receiver. So to me, like, had a bright freshman year, as bright as you can. Antonio came on the scene, obviously got hurt second year, now coming back this year. I mean, bro, he playing. He, I mean, he was the brightest spot in a Georgia game. Yeah. And ever since then, bro, he's been consistent. Like, mm-hmm. Obviously, you got, you got TB kind of been banged up. Mm-hmm. A couple other guys um, kind of going through it. But, like, I mean, he's playing great ball, bro. Uh, nah, Tone, Tone's been super consistent since the day he stepped foot on campus, you know, making plays when his name is called. And that's what you want out of receiver, man, especially receiver one. And he's definitely that guy for us right now, man. Uh, whenever we need to play, he, the zero is going to be there. Uh, so, and I'm super excited to see how much he's going to keep growing, man. Uh, I feel like him and Cade has that rapport like no other right now, man. They're locked in. Uh, yeah. I just feel like it's just going to continue to grow. And then, man, I, I'm excited to see how it goes. Not me too. And I think even just getting back to like, like we ain't been wide receiver you in a minute, but mm-hmm. I think they got a, a good nucleus to like, because you really need more than one guy to call yourself wide receiver you. Yeah. Know? They, they sure. got a good group of guys, obviously like him. Mm-hmm. Obviously, once you tell Brown get back, right? I feel like at, seeing Adam Randall come on, uh, some more. Cole Turner had a good day. Yeah. And then Troy, Troy had a good day. TJ Moore, you got TJ Moore boys. made some plays. TJ Moore, obviously West goes a little down, but like even yeah, yeah. obviously he sure we could do last game. Right. When you get all these guys healthy, or at least have enough to roll, bro. It's gonna continue to be an exciting year. And then I think to me, like just seeing the overall the offense, like obviously there were some doubts on it. Was Garrett Riley? Is it a fluke? Was he supposed right. to you know what I'm saying? But right. like I think the last couple of weeks have shown, okay, 
this is why we hired this man. Let this man do what he do. Let him cook. Let, <laughs> let him cook. Let him cook. That's why we hired. Let, let, let the man cook, bro. Because he he in his bag right now, and it's lovely to see. And I'll touch on Phil. I mean, to me, Phil was like the the constant. Like, you, you all these other variables, who's going to show up, who's not, mm-hmm. you know you can count on number seven. No, like no. That was kind of, to me, the most given thing coming to the season. Like, all right, what receiver's going to step up? What's K going to do? We know we can depend on Phil Moffa. To me, he's a rocket offense right now. Like, oh, no. you know what you can do with Phil. Like, no rain, shine, whatever. We can depend on seven. So I'm really happy to see him. Like, I'd love to see him stay healthy. Like, he got banged up today. And it scared me because I'm like, man, like, yeah. I really don't want to imagine this team without Phil Moffa, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got to say, other guys can't step up like they did. Right. But to me, he's, he's almost like how Travis was that 2020 year. No doubt. No doubt. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like 90 – 80% of the low. Yeah. Like you really become this guy to be at the, the heartbeat of the offense. For sure. No, I agree, man. He's doing, <laughs> doing a good job, man. Him and, and uh Will last year being the one two punch. And now he Correct. has you know, he has the reins, man. It's his it's his backfield. So man, he's definitely been doing a good job, you know, toting the rock, man. And I can't forget about another receiver, man. My Tennessee guy, Jake. Jake, man, tight end, man. I like he's staying, man. He he reached a thousand yards today uh, in his career, man. So nice like to him. And man, he's been balling, man. You know, he had that big run hand catch versus Georgia last last week. I think he had a hundred yards too. Uh so yeah. man, he's he's definitely a consistent, you know, player for us. He's been for the last couple of years too. Now nah, Brady's special. I think Brady's like uh, you need a tight end that can always create matchups, you know. So yeah. I think Brady's doing a great job. For you sure. get on defense. And then um, because I mean that's a big part too, bro. I think our defense has been super steady, super like Super steady, good, like all past, the above. That's decades, bro. <laughs> I mean, forever. Like even seeing West take over. Like obviously, yeah. like we wouldn't, we we wouldn't want to give as many points as we did mm-hmm. Georgia game. But since then, it's like, bro, it's been they've been, they've been playing great. Yeah. And I just think TJ Parker like kind of came off quiet. Like had a great freshman year, Man. been in a little bit quiet, and then today to me popped back on the scene and was like, okay, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, and I love to see. My boy, I mean, we I was playing with Agent Terrell, but his little bro AV to me is special, bro. AV, AV, I'm telling you, he's gonna be another three and out, man. AV is special. He's he's smaller than AJ, but he's a dog. He's a dog, just like AJ, man. He's not scared of anybody. Not gonna back down from anything, man. He's there every single play, man. I love watching AV play. Love seeing AV play. So shout out to little Terrell. Like, he just, like you said, he just plays so much swagger, bro. So, like exactly. he just. He, he not he obviously you can't make every play DB, but he know, he believes he's gonna make every play. No, and that's no. to me what makes it special. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I, so I, I love the defense. To me, guys that pop up on the screen, like we have been notorious for having a crazy white meathead linebacker. We, you <laughs> always we always had one every generation that you yeah. had. Yeah. You spent it went from Spencer Shuey to Ben Bulware. To Skowski, yeah, and then now and the next anointed one in the line is Sammy Brown. Sammy you know Brown. what I'm saying? Like yeah. we need, you need, you need one of those. And like, I love the way he plays. He plays hard. He plays fierce. Mm-hmm. He plays like reckless. Like so you need that. Like I so shout out to him. Yeah, uh, obviously big time recruit, and it's definitely translate. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think it's definitely good for him having Ben Bowler. You know, he's back coaching now, so nice. I think that's that's great for him having him in the room, being able to you know push him and coach him on you know how to become and grow into that linebacker that you know he needs to be. So, man, I'm excited for his future. Man, he had a, he had a great day today. He did, bro. Look, I think we can just finish off. I mean, ultimately, like NC State, bro. I, there's so many tweets. We probably had to put them on screen. So many tweets. So many thoughts. Um, like I said, it was good. It felt. The order has been restored <laughs> within this robbery. The trophy's back at Clemson. Yes, sir. We got a good W, put a spanking on them boys. Mm-hmm. Felt great. And then, like, obviously, when winning the first game in the conference, big, because, like, the goal, I mean, I would let us see us win out. Like you said, win out. The, the schedule looks favorable. Obviously, you got to show up each and every week. Right. You can't, like, give no mulligans. Exactly. But to me, like, if you could pick a season, like, the way it looks right now on paper, like, the way we plan who we got to play, like it looks like we can end up right where all of us really want Clemson to be back in that playoff run, ACC championship run, competing for a natty potentially. Like, I mean, I feel like everything is like on the table and looks promising. Man, it looks great, man. I'm telling you that that Louisville game, man, that's going to be the game. I'm telling you is right yeah. now it's us, Miami, and Louisville, the top three. So I feel like the winner of us in Louisville are probably going to end up playing Miami in championship. So I feel like that's the biggest challenge in front of us 
and then the rest is, you know, a big for us. So, man, I'm, I'm excited to see what we can do, man. To me, biggest winners from today, obviously, K. I think Garrett Riley once again show all the fans why he got hired. No shout doubt. out to my man. Shout, shout out to Garrett Riley. Yes, I think that was that was a big move from Sweeney culturally for going outside the program. Mm -hmm. Then to see a little bit of struggle there, a little bit of doubt, like, uh, did he make the right move? Is this, you know what I'm saying? Like, who whose fault is the offense? Why are we not like, why are we not doing what he did at TCU? Mm -hmm. But to see it now full throttle and everything being aligned, love what he's doing. Shout out to him, Flowers. Underrated person, Matt Luke. Yeah. If things are going well offensively and you don't hear nothing from the, about the offensive line, that's a good thing. No, for sure. <laughs> if you don't hear about the offensive line, that means things are going well for the offensive line. For sure. And I think he has been an incredible hire. So shout out to Matt Luke, the offensive line, shout out to the boys in the trenches, because that's always been a thing, notably, like, you're going to see the receivers, you're going to see the running backs, you're going to see the quarterbacks. If they do anything, that means the offensive line doing anything. And obviously that has been like a – Sadly, like a, a down part over the last couple of years, but to see him come in and raise the standard a little bit to where we all wanted to be, shout out to offensive line. No doubt. And then, I don't know if you got any, if you got any other winners, but that was my Matt Luke, Gary Riley, and then. And I'll say, shoot, I'm always on the defense, man. I love our defense. Ever since I was in high school, man, I've just always admired the way that our defense plays every single week, man. So shout out to West, man, keeping the defense rolling, man, keeping them strapping them boys. And man, I'm, I'm just excited to see what we're going to do from here, man, especially with the offense rolling. So let's get it. Nice. Let's get it. Look, like I said, we're going to do this every week. Uh, we're going to keep trying to keep it short, sweet. Y'all can listen to this whenever. Um, but I feel like it's, well, let us know, let us know comments. Obviously like, subscribe, comment, share, show love on all platforms. We're going to put the stuff out there. Hopefully like we don't feel like there's anything like this in the space. For us, you know, I feel like we we like I would call myself a fan. I'm definitely a Clemson supporter now, <laughs> and I think there's a lot of people that talk, but they don't have like they don't really know what they be saying. Yeah, and I feel there needs to be more like good dialogue no doubt. in it. So hopefully y'all enjoy this. Y'all let us know. We will probably do some questions if y'all want to see some questions at some point. We're gonna have some special guests on here. Some of the other homies that we play with that might pop in for a little minute and just, and just talk ball. But yeah, that's uh week three, Darren Rencher. A Rod, man. We'll check in. Yeah. I'll get in with y'all next week. Next week. Love. Oh.